I'm Logan Herring, CEO of Reach Riverside, and I just want to stop by and give a special congratulations to Councilwoman Xanthia Oliver for her one in a million award for multiplying good. Thank you, Xanthia Oliver, for all you do for our communities. Keep up the good work. Good afternoon and happy Memorial Day. My name is Logan Herring and I'm the CEO of the work group. That's the Warehouse, Reach Riverside, and Kingswood Community Center. Every week during our virtual lunch and learn, we talk to special guests from around the city, county, and state that are telling us about all of the efforts that are happening during this pandemic to support our community. Today we have special guest Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, City Council President Hanifa Shabazz, and City Councilwoman Xanthia Oliver. After we talk to our guests, we'll be talking about our efforts in Riverside around our relief fund and everything we're doing to support our community during this troubling time. First up, we have Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester. Thank you so much, Logan. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, we, we appreciate you being here with us. Now, now, we know Delaware is a family-oriented state. Everybody knows each other. So before we get right into talking about business, how is the family? How's your father, your sister? How's, how's everyone doing? Everybody's doing well, you know, considering. And, you know, first of all, I guess I want to say to everyone out there that um, has a family member or or are personally um, dealing with COVID-19, that our thoughts and our prayers are with you and that we're sending you love and, um, you know, real prayers for healing. Um, it's a tough time. And I you know, my mom and dad, they are in their home. Um, my kids are in their homes. Even my dog is not with me. So I am literally like the movie Home Alone. I, I'm literally home alone, but everybody's doing good. Anybody who knows Ted Blunt, um, you may not recognize the current Ted Blunt. He's looking more like the 1970s Afro wearing Ted Blunt, but he's doing okay. He's doing fine. It's good to hear. I actually saw him a couple weeks ago and his hair was starting to grow. I saw him down at the riverfront. LJ and I went for a walk and he walked by and gave us the little, you know, the fist because he didn't want to get too close. He had his mask on, but I could tell it was him at that point. So I don't know if I could anymore. Well, I'm glad you told me that because otherwise you'd be telling on him because we keep telling him, you know, stay safe. And that and that's what I would say to everybody out there. Like, wear those masks, make sure you are socially, uh, you know, distancing yourself and, and taking care of yourself because it's a, it's a really important um, message for everybody, washing your hands, all of that. Um, it's really important no matter how old or how, how young you are. So thanks for, thanks for looking out for my dad, Logan. Absolutely, absolutely. So words of wisdom from you. And so what are you seeing from, you know, Delaware to D.C.? Um, what's taking place right now and, and what are you doing to to help us locally, but also from a, a national perspective? Right. Well, you know, first of all, this is one of these situations which none of us have ever experienced in, in our lives. I mean, you know, this in terms of the unemployment rate, we've never seen unemployment like this um, in terms of the toll that is taking on us physically and mentally. Um, we haven't seen anything like this. And you know, I want to first acknowledge and highlight the work that, that you are doing, um, you know, the, the Riverside Relief Fund, um, just all of the things that you are doing to help support the community. Even if we did things on the federal level, which, you know, folks know you got the kind of like that federal level, of, you know, where we're making some decisions about um, funding and laws. Um, it really doesn't matter if it's not executed on the local level and it's a two-way street because we hear from you and we take those things and turn it into legislation. So for example, one of the things that we were seeing, um, the first order of business was to try to get out money um, for preparedness and testing and to look at a vaccine. That was like one of the first things we did. But then the second big package of dollars was the CARES Act, I uh, know the Family, um, Family First Act, which we were wanted to focus on making sure that people had ability to take off if their family member got sick, um, that people had expanded unemployment insurance, um, food, uh, food stamps, SNAP, that SNAP and programs like that were more available to people in the immediate, and that there were these stimulus checks that money was put into the hands of individuals, and also that we focused on those small businesses. But what we saw was that small, particularly minority businesses, 
we're not having the same access to those loans and grants. And so we had a real focus in the package, the interim package, to make sure there was a carve out of money that was really targeted to those that need the money the most. And so um, as we hear things here locally in Delaware, we take them back to DC and try to adapt and also try to make sure that we have the resources here. But really the action is, is here on the ground and the work that you are doing and that uh, Rich Riverside is doing. Well, thank you so much for your support and in, in our efforts, uh, both from a professional standpoint and a personal standpoint. We might touch on that a little bit later. So I understand there's another bill uh, on the table right now, and what would that go to? I'm glad you brought that up. It is actually called the HEROES Act, and it originated in the House of Representatives. We just voted on it uh, on was that th Thursday or Friday of, of, of last week. Um, it is a $3 trillion bill um, that focuses on those folks that are on the front lines every day, you know, making sure that whether it's our teachers, our first responders, um, police officers, sanitation workers, um, we wanted to make sure that we had money coming from the federal government going right to state and local governments. Because the reality is, if Delaware or Newcastle County or the city, if they run out of money, then three things are going to happen. Either they're going to have to lay people off, they're going to have to cut services or raise taxes or potentially all three. And so in our bill, the first thing we wanted to do was get money back to the states and to the local governments so that we can continue to have the services that we need and to support those heroes that are on the front line. There was also money in that bill for testing. Uh, one of the most important things, whether we're talking about for a health perspective or even opening up our economy, is I can't feel confident if I am not sure what am I walking into. And so we put in significant dollars for testing, but also contact tracing, meaning the ability to find out, well, who else did I come in contact with? to make sure that they're also aware of whether or not they test positive or not and that they get the support and, and resources they need. And then treatment. I actually had a bill that was included in the HEROES Act that would allow for people to get treatment for COVID-19, regardless of, of whether you had money to pay for it or not. You should not have money be a barrier to you getting treatment when you need it. And so this bill is really a major bill. It deals with also unemployment insurance, also those smaller small businesses that and nonprofits, you know, nonprofits are the ones that are on the front lines again. And so whether it's from the federal level and being able to access loans or from a state level, if that money is not there, then nonprofits can go out of business too. So this bill really focused on the heroes that are really keeping us going and to provide that testing, that treatment, that contact tracing, and supports to allow people to get back to work or to get back to school. Um, it's a massive bill, 1,800 pages. So there's a lot, lot in it. Um, but you know, if anybody's interested in hearing more about it, please reach out to our office as well. Thank you, thank you. So we're we're running out of time, unfortunately. But I, I know you have. Sounds like you have a ton of work to to do, as always. But even more during this pressing time. So wanted to shift gears really quickly. And the last thing I wanted you to speak about is your support of the warehouse because you have a professional dance studio named after you in the warehouse. And I know that um, that, that is a, a near and dear to your heart, dance and, and your history with dance. So you just take the opportunity to speak about that, uh, that dance studio, what it means to you, even though you haven't been able to even come see it yet. Oh, I know. Well, first of all, I just want to say how honored I am. Um, you know, I, I and I want to just speak specifically to the teenagers. Um, I am so glad that Reach Riverside, the comprehensive nature of what you're doing is so important. But that focus on teens, I, I will never forget what it was like to be a teen. I still have my, my journal. It starts my first day of high school and um, what I was thinking and feeling. And right now, I know that my what I experienced is nothing compared to some of the, the challenges and opportunities that teenagers have today. And and and, and I'm gonna tell you, um, the teen warehouse gets me excited because 
as a teenager, I always wanted to be respected. I always wanted to, um, I wanted people to hear me and see me and, and, and understand that I have something to give. And at the Teen Warehouse, I feel like you've created this space where people can create and where they can become activists and where they can become their full self. So I thank you so much for that, that leadership. I am excited to get over there and also to, to, to hear from the teens themselves um, in ways that we can help make not just Wilmington or Delaware a better place, but the world. Thank you, Congresswoman, for your time, your commitment uh, to serve not only our city of Wilmington, the state and the entire country. Do not let me forget. Absolutely. Census, that gov people have got to fill out this census. If you want, if you had complaints about your schools, we need the money. Fill out that census. If the, if the streets have potholes and, and we don't have good roads and bridges, fill out the census. You want a hospital to go to that really can take care of you? Fill out that census. It'll only take you a couple of minutes and it'll bring dollars to Delaware. People, make sure you go fill out that census. If you need help, reach out to us, reach out to the Congresswoman's office. We'd be happy to assist you. Thank you again so much for your time. I know you got a lot of work to get back to, but appreciate you taking a little bit out of your time today to talk with us. The purpose-built community model proves that it can be done. Every community in this country who chases that kind of a result has to understand that their circumstances and facts are different. But the basic values of Tom Cousins, the drive, the hope that he instills in people around him, the belief that change can occur for the better for everyone. All of those are core ingredients in each one of our journeys. Welcome back, and we are now joined by City Council President Hanifa Shabazz and City Councilwoman Xanthia Oliver. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. So happy to have you joining our Lunch and Learn. So I want to start with uh, City Councilwoman Xanthia Oliver. Can you talk about some of your efforts as you represent uh, Riverside within your district, some of the efforts that you've done personally and some of the things that you've seen within your district? Some of the efforts that um, we as a group have been working on in the third district, April, I think it was April the 21st, we, um, uh, I conducted a mass uh, giveaway partnership with Brown Bag. We gave over over 800 masks on uh, 9th and Walnut, uh, along with the uh, Food Bank of Delaware. Um, we had some sponsors with uh, consist of Mayor Mike Prezicki, President Hanifa Shabazz, um, Lieutenant Governor um, Bethany Hall Long. Uh, we had Senator Darius Brown and uh, former Councilman, my brother Norman Oliver, who assisted with that effort. And we had a really nice turnout. And, the food bank gave away thousands of uh, pounds of food. Um, secondly, uh, I work with Stubbs uh, School with Ken Livingston and Dr. Williams. Every other Tuesday, they are giving away um, free meals to the students along with distributing some packages. I've been assisting with that. And on Fridays, uh, they've been working with Waltz, which uh, of giving uh, away hot foods every Friday. They would like the kids to come up with the parents um, to give away some hot foods. Um, another uh, uh, another uh, organization would be yourself versus Kingswood has been um, providing the testing, um, giving away meals. I really appreciate that y'all are still delivering the meals to all your seniors who participate in your program over there. I've been getting a lot of uh, good feedback. Um, um, my brother Alonzo, who drives Advance, he's been giving me a lot of good feedback. The seniors are very happy that y'all are still keeping them in mind, delivering food to them on a regular basis. They're regular lunches, and some of them are hot and cold, and they're very happy with that. Um, that prescription drug delivery. I think that's excellent because it's a lot of seniors aren't able to get out. So I'm just excited at the work y'all doing over there. I really appreciate um, you, Logan and Kenyatta, the hard work you're doing. Um, 
And um, also, we're going to be distributing some masks on the Northeast area once um, the mayor and uh, the president are going to be distributing some to the neighborhood plannings. So one day, um, I think it's next week, she'll speak more on that. We're going to be giving out some masks. So I've been very busy with this um, pandemic. Um, I've also constantly been giving out flowers. We had a, a group of guys distributing flowers throughout the whole third district, just telling people to keep their hands clean and how to stay safe and um, keep your social distance. Excellent, excellent. Well, it sounds like a lot of activities and you got your finger on the pulse of all those activities. So I appreciate you informing the greater audience of everything that's going on in the third district and, and somewhat citywide. Uh, one thing I heard, they was giving away free Walt's chicken. I don't know if I just heard that, but if you can send me a message afterward to tell me where the chicken's <laughs> gonna be, I'll be there. So I appreciate you giving that information. So uh, Madam President, I know um, Councilwoman Oliver alluded to some of the activities that are going on more citywide, but if you could share anything else uh, as it pertains to citywide initiatives or what you yourself would you have done personally to support these efforts in our community? Well, sure, and thank you so much, Logan, for allowing me the opportunity to share, um, you know, some of the efforts that myself, uh, and well as the um, working with the Wilmington Community Advisory Council, the state asked us to use our network of over 35 community-based organizations to assist in getting education and information on where there are resources, assessment sites. Um, are, are happening around the city. So we have formed a community mobilization team so that we got a definitely, like you said, a pulse on the community and what the community's needs are and so that we can relay that information back to local government as well as to uh, other levels of government, the county as well as the state. So, um, so far you've seen several um, different organizations in a, a continuous influx of assessment sites coming up for individuals to get testing. Um, that's, you know, from uh, the effort that we have um, formed together to um, advise where we felt they were the best places for them to be. And also, um, um, we've partnered with the uh, municipal government to ensure that with the, with the, um, uh, with the directive to having to wear masks all the time, we felt it was essential that we identify our least vulnerable communities. And the city is purchasing, has, has purchased 20,000 masks washable, reusable mask, um, and that will we plan to distribute. You work along with um, community-based organizations and entities such as Council Member Oliver was speaking to, a neighbor planning council, civic associations, um, to help us in the distribution of those to our most vulnerable communities. Um, so we've been, a, we've also initiated the beautification teams that's doing the community cleanup. They, we have um, extended their work day so that they are doing door-to-door -door flyer distribution um, into the community, let them know when there's assessment site or a, a food giveaway or any type of COVID, uh, you know, COVID initiative. So we've been quite busy um, in in uh, um, in, in provide, trying trying to provide the resources and, and communication to where you know resource giving is. And our next our next level of it is is preparing the community and. And by listening with these town hall meetings that we have been hosting, we need to hear from the community because we need to see how has COVID-19 impacted them so that we can advocate on our, on our citizens' behalf about this impact because um, I, it, we know it has economically, education, um, and in other ways, so that we could make sure that we can uh, advocate for those resources that came down from the federal government to our state and county government uh, for the COVID relief. So, and our efforts are forming some whatever, like a relief fund type of initiative so that the, although money didn't come directly to the city per se, but the money, we can be reimbursed for the impact that COVID has had on our community. So the goal is to try to do the community-wide mass giveaway on November 23rd. Um, and and those, those different locations are being shored up as we continue to partner with our community-based organizations and other advocates out there in the community, such as Councilwoman, um, a Councilwoman, um, Oliver and other members of city council. So um, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, busy is an understatement. Um, we have to get ready to go. And, uh, and obviously we need to let you get back to work because it sounds like you are extremely busy. Uh, if people wanted to find out more information about resources, how to join the town hall, um, where should they visit? Which, which website, Madam President? Wilmington, WilmingtonCityCouncil.com. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, Councilwoman Oliver, um, a final closing message if you have, we have about 15 seconds if there's anything you want to send out to the community particularly the riverside community 
I was just like, I, I was remiss to uh, mention um, we did a mass giveaway to Old Brandywine Village and a lot of them residents over there showed up and there are a lot of seniors, but I'd like to um, give a special thank out to the Riverside residents and tell everyone to be safe um, and to come out to the meetings, even if it's remotely and just stay involved because I think y'all have had quite a few meetings over there along with myself and the president and it's been a nice turnout, but I would like them to take advantage of some of the resources that y'all are giving them, such as the Department of Labor, such as the on the job training, um, uh, the Department of Labor uh, job readiness, readiness skills. Um, and preparing them for jobs, I'm sorry, but I would like for them to take advantage of that. So when the times come and getting their credit together, so when the times come, they are prepared for the revitalization and the change, because it's hard to accept change, but they have to be ready because it's happening. And thank yeah, you so much. Oliver, you forgot like, the partnership we're doing with the Wilmington Housing Authority, giving a like, mass for all of the high rises and other sites for WF. You forgot to say that too. That's another collaboration that's happening with <laughs> The city council Oliver and the Wilmington Housing Authority. I just throw that in. Sorry. No, I appreciate it. Again, there's no lack of effort here on, on both of your parts and and all of our representatives. So we we thank you. We thank you for your time and sharing all of these activities. We do have to run. So ladies, thank you. Uh, keep up the good work. Keep up the good fight. And we will talk to you soon. Good. Thank you. Thank you. This partnership with Prosperity Now has been everything for my personal growth as a leader. Uh, I often come into these opportunities, professional development, trainings, with a little bit of skepticism because when you're leading an organization, first you don't want to take time away from the organization to actually um, work on yourself because sometimes you think you know a lot already, but you also don't think it's fair to the organization to remove yourself from the day-to-day -day activities. And the first four day training we had in DC, I was just amazed. I was calling back the people in my office, like, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. And I think I just learned so much, but I also got a thirst for learning after being with Prosperity Now and its group, because I understand there's so much I don't know, and there's so much that I can continue to learn. So I, I think now I'm a, a lifelong learner as a leader. And I think in doing that, it, it refreshes me, it re-energizes me. And then I bring back those skill sets, those learnings to my organization so we can have the best impact possible. And thank you all for tuning in to our Lunch and Learn. Uh, we would love for you to continue to contribute, um, not just by watching, but participating. And we'd love for you to join us on our platforms, our social media platforms, the Reach Riverside, the Team Warehouse, Kingswood Community Center. Tune in to our partner and collaborator that's bringing to you these virtual Lunch and Learns, DETV. Uh, make sure to support our Riverside Relief Fund that is bringing uh, cash disbursements into our community, bringing technology into our community, making sure that everyone has healthy and nutritious food um, during this pandemic. Uh, we just appreciate your continued support. So visit us at reachriverside.org, visit all of our social media, and make sure to tune in next week at our next Lunch and Learn, Monday at noon.